Welcome back to another Service Minute. My name is Dave Schmidt. I'm the tech support manager for Innovent. Today we're going to focus on addressing a CPICO controller and the expansion boards. This will allow multiple controllers and expansion boards to communicate properly with each other. When installing an expansion board in the field, it will have to be addressed at that time. Also note, there's a different set of instructions to address Pico 5 controllers in older. The next step is to determine whether the replacement controller is a main board or an expansion board. A main controller or a main board would be addressed one. Each expansion board will be addressed as the number of expansion plus one. For example, expansion one is addressed to two, and expansion two is addressed to three, and so on. The large Pico can be a main controller and an expansion board. The small Pico is always going to be an expansion board. To change the address of these controllers, locate the small LED screen located between J3 and J4. Place a small object, such as a control screwdriver, into the pinhole. Press the button until the desired address is showing. The new address should now be displayed on the LED. This address can also be verified using the Corel display. Plug in the display and hold down the three buttons on the right side. This will pull up an addressing menu. The display address setting should be defaulted to 32. This is the address needed to sync the display with the controller. The I.O. board address should match the number on the controller's LED screen. More often than not, these expansion boards will be smaller CPICO e-boards instead of full-sized ones. These are addressed using the dip switches on the top left edge of the expansion board. The instructions for setting the address is found on this chart or the expansion board itself. The black boxes indicate the switch will need to be in the down position. For example, expansion two should have the switch number one and number two down. This corresponds to address three. The rest of the switches will be in the up or off position. Review the unit's wiring diagram to ensure the cables are connected to the proper terminals and be sure to use cables rated for RS-485 communication. The connection of the expansion board can then be verified at the main controller's display. Press the target button and scroll to the unit status and press enter. Scroll to the expansion board status and you should see which boards are currently connected to the main control board. If the expansion is still showing as offline in the unit status menu, it may need to be addressed using the addressing wizard. If the serial number of the unit starts with a two or a seven, the following steps may be required. On the controller interface, push the target button to go to the main menu. Scroll down to the control variables and press enter. Press the up arrow and enter to go to the advanced menu. Press enter again to go to the login screen. Press enter and use the arrows to enter the code 9998. Go to control variables, advanced and network settings. Scroll to the screen that says CPCOE addressing. Press enter and follow the directions. Press down to advance to the next screen. Disconnect all expansion boards and press down. Press enter and then use the arrow to select which number of the expansion being added. Press enter again and then down to advance. Position the dip switches to match the locations on the screen. In this graphic, the only switch that should be positioned on is the third one from the right. Press down again to advance. Wait until the status changes to online. This should take 20 to 30 seconds. Now press down and set the locations of the dip switches to match what is shown on the display. Note, the switch in the black box in the upper position indicates the switch is on. Press down and cycle the power on the new expansion board. Do not turn the power off to the main controller. When the power is restored, press down and you should see the status screen. It may take up to one minute for the status to change to online. 
This process can be repeated for any additional expansion boards. Note, only one expansion can be powered at a time during the wizard addressing process. Proceed back to the unit status menu and confirm the expansion registers as online. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to check out our channel for more tech support content.